morning everyone, my name is Sandra June and I'm glad to be here sharing with you my experience in the summer research on the Dr. lab. My project was to establish a new sustaining piece story for a group to study the neuroanatomy of the Ciba Free Central Nervous System, of course with the help of my mentors, Dr. Jeffrey Plunken and Alexis Tabanes Castillo. The main goal of, um, of my project is to study the cell biology in vivo. What I mean by cell biology is to see uh, how the cells behave and what cells are expressed during, uh, during the areas of regeneration and what genes are expressed during those areas. Previous studies on, um, previous studies by Thomas Baker's on axona, uh, on axona regrowth of uh, transaction of the spinal cord show that there are areas responsible for regeneration. So in this image of the brain, in this image of the ventral view of the Ciba Fisher brain, we highlight, and uh, Thomas Becker highlighted the brain stem, there are brain stem nucleus which are cells that do similarity functions uh, with high re regenerative capacity and we have brain stem nucleus with low regenerative capacity. So knowing these, we now have an idea where to find those cells that we want, in what areas, in what areas to be. So the purpose of my um, project is to establish an sustaining history protocol to see, uh, to study the neuroanatomy of the zebra fish. And we use the chrysoviolet staining because uh, it's known that it's a basic dye that stains the, the ribosomes and the nasal bodies is are, are part of the neurons that are granular bodies that, stain, that are made of raw endoplasmatic reticulum and are stained by chrysophile. So I hypothesize that um, establishing the initial staining protocol will allow to identify the regions of the zebra free brain. And to prove my, my hypothesis, we dissect out the zebra free brain. We put it on fixation of 4% parfumaldehyde. This process will prevent the tissue from decaying. <coughs> then we transfer to 30% sucrose for one day and then it's going to be ready for embedding and sectioning. The embedding is on OCD media, which is optimal uh, according to temperature, it's not bricks. And then we section on the chiral microdome. And uh, this is a picture of the chiral microdome and this is an inside view to cut our section 60 micrometers thick. And generally for map the brain, we use corona plane and another experiment we use side of length for section our zebra fish brain. The mapping system is very is very important for have an, uh, in order to have an organization and a record of our sections. We have uh, five sections per slide. Uh, every other section on another slide in order to have parallel sections in every slide. One set is going to be for controls and another set is going to be for a positive test. So we have uh, two sets of sections in the same area of the brain. That's very important in this experiment. And then we compare it with the others of the neuroanatomy neuro of the zebra fish. After several trials, we did a, the, the staining standard operating protocol, which consists of uh, inserting the, um, the sections on one to one ratio on chloroform and alcohol. This process will divide the tissue and uh, the crystal staining will penetrate easily into the tissue. Then we put it on 100% alcohol and then 95% alcohol. Then we put it on a piece of violet. The, the, tissue, the, the tissues will stain and then we differentiate the regions of the, of the brain by reason on 95% alcohol and then and 100% alcohol. Then we put it on, on mounting media and we will see it on the microscope. Let's see our results. This is a, a section of our brain in the mid brain. And we, as I said, we compare it with the atlas. We can say that it's around section 173 and 179. By looking at um, Becker's research, he saw that there was a, a regeneration area with high capacity on this area of the brain, which is called NMLF 
which, which stands for um, nucleus of the medial longitudinal fascicle. Um, yeah, that's, it. that's the, the pseudo pecker. So another section of the brain is this section <coughs> from around 100, section 149 to identify what in what area of the brain we are. In this section, we have by um, by breakfast times low general capacity uh, nuclei, which stands uh, for perventricular posterior tuberculum, which is known as TPPP. This section is for uh, brain stem. As we can see, the difference is uh, tissue is less, uh, is more clear than the other tissues in the membrane. So we can say that we are um, less missile bodies and more processes in this area, which is the brain stem. By Becker's study to identify what regeneration areas we have in the brain stem, he identified that we have an IRF as a, as a high, um, high regenerative capacity in nuclei, and IRF stands stand for inferior reticular formation. <coughs> So in conclusion, the establishment of the initial staining protocol allows us to identify anatomically these regeneration areas found by Baker, and this permits the analysis of, of certain regions or certain cells on the, brain, on the brain. So the official direction is to look for uh, stem cells on these regions and uh, what roles play stem cells. So my acknowledgments are to Dr. Jeffrey Plonker and Dr. Alexis Stapane for allowing us to study and make a big mess <laughs> on, the, <laughs> on the lab. To Francis, Alejandra, and this paper that were part of my group of studying histology, and the U.S. Department of Defense and NCA branch. So this is my reference. Any questions? First time, because we were trying to, as we the chloroform was overnight, and in order to make sure that the protocol, we were trying to uh, define the tissue in less time. So, and it didn't work. Like overnight, it worked, and we leave it like that. So, we need to define the tissue in order to stay get properly in the in the tissue, and then when we put it in alcohol, it doesn't, in, you know, the color stays in the tissue. Because if, if it's less than overnight, we won't see anything on the time. How many brains do you actually uh, work with uh, to get yeah. a good sample? And what would be the well, idea for a good sample? Well, we're like two brains per, per group was like six brains to do that. And then what do you do? You compare? Or you're working on different sections, so you're all working on the same section to then compare the best one? Yeah, yeah, we compare our sections and we get the best one. Yes. Like it's the same, to choose the best tissue. Um, How again did you establish the nuclei of interest in the mid and the high brain? Were those the areas that were very prominent as far as the um, concentration of stem cells, you know, we just did research to, to find out that those are the areas you were going to investigate, and then from there you just... Um, yeah, by Becker's time, he, he's a, he says in his paper that those areas are the ones that have regenerative capacity. Mm -hmm. So now we want to look for the cells that are responsible for that regeneration. Mm -hmm. And we have an hypothesis, a hypothesis that we will look for stem cells in those areas, mm -hmm. and that's future direction. Mm -hmm. But first, you know, we have to know what we are in the place. <coughs> we, well, not, no see those mm -hmm. regeneration areas. Like, um, oh, so. Yes? So you mentioned 
mentioned you're using mature silicon, right? Mm -hmm. So there would be different degrees of maturity and also about comparing to immature. I would think that regeneration is greater in immature fish or not necessarily? Um, I think it's going to be better in, in immature fish. Size of the aquarium or the, the space that they have have an influence on the on the size of the fish. Are you from our IA cook committee? <laughs> so, our cage restraints. Um, no, no. <laughs> yeah, I mean it can. Yeah, I mean you know you can get different behaviors from different areas. You can get different behaviors and different sizing of fish from different quant you know areas of, that are available for that fish to acquire and. Uh, um, you know, we just try to take three to four month old fish as best we can. We get them from a pet store, and that 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 uh, that avoids us from paying ten dollars a fish to a supplier. And they're ten dollars a fish from a supplier. They're fifty cents a piece at a pet store, and we get wild type fish, and uh, we try to size them at approximately the same size and age. And sometimes we get bigger batches, and sometimes we get smaller ones. But um, you know, the data. It, it's interesting because the Saunders project uh, technically seems to be one of the one of the more you know not challenging as far as technical, but the technical what she has done is unbelievable because to get to where she is and to be able to identify those sections that usually requires a full time person that you hire to do that for your lab, and so what they've accomplished in the last six months is just quite amazing to be able to cut a section of a brain and say there's where we are. And there's approximately where that regenerative nuclei is. And once we know that, then we can go back, like she said, and look for those stem cells and see if they're in that area that is of high regenerative capability. So it's, it's quite, a, quite a technical challenge what they've overcome to get to that point and get those three slides that you guys just saw. Yes? Can you go back to the slide about migraine? Yeah. Do you stain the, the missile body? One more? Right. So it doesn't look to me like there's a high concentration of staining in that nuclei. It looks like it's more along the, along the ventricles, along the ventricular yeah. aspect. Yeah, but the crystal body is staying for nasal bars. Right. Like the nasal body won't tell me if that area is uh, re re high regenerative or not. Okay. It's like we need to have a stain protocol in order to see. The, the the tissue mm -hmm. and then look for what Becker did mm -hmm. and find that by ourselves to learn that. But so the nasal body, the nasal staining won't tell you, uh, like the nasal body is staining this this area and the brain cell. That doesn't mean that that's regenerative. Okay. That's how it is. So for future directions, we would be using a different type of stain in that nuclei to look at the regeneration. Yeah, for looking at the regeneration, we use immune staining mm -hmm. uh, to look those cells expressed in that area. Do you know what kind of staining you would use? And that's the stain, but that's all the <laughs> Very good. Okay. Thank you.